This is the big one, guys. This is the big one, Vietnam War. And just like I've been doing, let's take a look back. Historically, Vietnam, Southeast, South um, East Asia, was a French colony. It's called French Indochina. They had it for hundreds of years during the period of, of imperialism, um, or at least 100 years. And if you remember, Japan took this land in 1940, causing the U.S. to cut off ties or dip, um, trade ties with, with Vietnam, with, with Japan, excuse me, which then causes Japan to attack America. Boom, Pearl Harbor. Okay. I mean, after the war, the question is, is France going to get this land back? Right? America you know, cut off ties with Japan for taking France's land. Is France going to get their land back? And France said yes. So they, they but, it, but also in the north part of Vietnam, a guy named Ho Chi Minh said no. He says, I'm going communist. And he takes, starts taking over land in the north. The French send in troops to the south. And just like in Korea, Vietnam is split right down the middle. North Vietnam is communist. Ho Chi Minh is, is if you remember, we talked about him during Comic-Con. Um, he was a part of this, the, he learned from the Soviets in the 30s. And in the South was France, okay, um, who wanted to stay capitalist and had a nationalist government in power. <clears throat> well, in 1959, Ho Chi Minh was, was winning. He was taking more land. He was doing kind of terrorist-style attacks against the, the French along the border region. Um, China and Russia did not want to see another Korean War, so they were kind of like standoffish on this. But the Vietnamese were really tough. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, come to find out that Chinese and the Soviets were giving weapons to Ho Chi Minh and his people, but this time they didn't want to send troops, okay? Um, and um, Ho Chi Minh is, and then in 1954, the, the, the French asked for U.S. help. And the U.S. says, sure, um, we'll, we'll keep the South capitalists. Don't worry about it. We got this, right? Um, by 1964, though, the friend, the, the North was, was looking like um, they could, there, there was supposed to be like free elections, and, and the, the North, Ho Chi Minh said, no, I'm not going to listen to you. Um, and and by, the, by the mid 1960s, it looked like, you know, this was, Kennedy was sending troops, right? Eisenhower started sending troops in 56, Kennedy in early 60s, but not a lot. And, and all of a sudden, it starts to look like the South's going to fall. And, and in 1965, Lyndon Johnson starts sending massive amounts of American troops to Vietnam. Okay, massive amounts of American troops to Vietnam. Um, and um, he has this idea. He calls it the domino theory. And he goes, "Look, if one of these Southeast Asian countries fall, they're all going to fall like a pile of dominoes. Korea will go, and then Singapore, and Thailand." And then Malaysia, and then all of a sudden we're going to be dealing with this whole area of Southeast Asia being communist. So I'm going to support big time um, the troops in, in South Vietnam. Um, but the thing is that the Northern, and this war was different because the North Vietnamese really wanted, Ho Chi Minh was a really good leader, and they really wanted it. They wanted it bad. I mean, they were called the Viet Cong. Um, and they would they would just attack American troops and diners and, and, and on the roads. They would attack and hide. It was maybe what you call terrorist style attacks. Maybe I don't know. Guerrilla warfare is kind of what one of the phrases that was used a lot in this period. Um, and, and but something really weird had happened during this time. TV had become a big thing, and in the United States, TV had turned to color. Look, color pictures, <laughs> okay? Um, look, and, and, and every day on TV, you would see this. You would hear about American soldiers in Vietnam being killed, and you would see color footage from it. And, and at that point, and they don't do it anymore, they used to allow the news in the front line. So we would get like, not we, I was alive, my parents' generation would get like great, great color footage of the war, like right up close. I mean, even in the last two recent wars, which I, I was old enough to remember well, 
the, the news media was way in the city. I mean, you would see like explosions in the distance and, and bombs being dropped. You would not get that kind of, they, the, they'll never let that happen again because it freaked Americans out. Americans are watching their TV and they're going, what is going on here? And whole group of people, and, and, and during, let me just stop for a second and say, look, during World War I, during World War II, during Korea, during Vietnam, there were military drafts, okay? Especially after 65, they started picking up high school boys at 18 and sending them out to war, okay? You had to put your name in a lottery, if or your, your birthday, if your birthday was called, you went to war. Bam, that's it. No questions asked. You went to war. You were fighting, okay? And it, whether you like it or not. Um, and, and maybe in World War II, you know, people were like, yeah, let's go fight Hitler. Um, but by the time the Vietnam War hit, and they watched it on TV every day, the kids were like, no, I don't want to fight. And a whole generation of young people was born that we call the hippies. My father graduated high school in 1969. And when his draft card came in the mail in 1968, he burned it, okay? And, and then another one came and his mom wrote deceased on it and sent it back. And he moved from New York to California. He changed his name from Salvatore Bergagliano to Salvatore Marina. He went to University High and he started a new life. He dodged the draft. And a lot of kids did. No one wanted to fight in this war. Wildly unpopular. The hippies were born in this war. Make love, not war, right? Um, well, the war drags on. And, 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 and Johnson's not going to stop. Now, now, there are rumors that in 1968, Lyndon Johnson had, had a peace with the North. And that um, Nixon, um, well, Nixon was running for president in 1968, and that this somehow got political and went Lyndon Johnson's no more. He said that Nixon actually called the North and said, don't make peace yet. You'll get a better peace when I'm there. It doesn't happen. Now, I don't know if this is true. This was in Lyndon Johnson's no more. And this is like, you know, controversial history, right? Um, but the war drags on, 68, 69, 70. 71, and, and more and more Americans are dying, they're being drafted every time, every day, every year. It's on TV, all you see when you turn on the news is, is this. Okay. Americans famously would, would fly their helicopters over the fields and just be firing their machine guns into the forest because they would be trying to control the forest, but they would just kill anything that moves. And then they would do this thing where they would drop this, this thing called napalm. Now, now you remember napalm from World War II, right? Firebombs. It just catches fire. Well, they didn't make them bombs. They would just drop the napalm, right, over the forest. And it would catch everything on fire in the forest. Sometimes it would hit non North Vietnamese, so they'd be like, oh, there's a North Vietnamese in the forest right there who fired at us, napalm the forest, right? And there's this image, oh my God, it was on the cover of Time Magazine, I'm not gonna show it to you because I don't show you those kind of images. Google it if you're interested. Um, and this young girl, she was like my daughter's age, you know, like seven, she's running from the forest and she's naked, I won't show that either. Um, and she's burning, she's burned all over her body. She's crying. And it was all over the news and the media. It was on Time Magazine. The whole world saw what we were doing to these people. We lost that war. We lost. That was the first war the U.S. ever lost. We lost. You know, it was an embarrassment. This little country would just they'd be the most powerful country in the world. Um, this. This is napalm forest. This is what it looks like when they napalm a forest. Um, in 1979, Nixon finally agrees to withdraw from North Vietnam. He makes peace, right? He says, we'll have peace. Let's, let's, let's now make peace, right? Um, and, it, and it happens. And then Nixon has Watergate, and, and Ford becomes president. And in 1975, the North overtakes the South, and Gerald Ford says, instead of send troops to reinforce the South, he says, pull everyone out. We lost this war. 
we lost Vietnam. It was an embarrassment and it led to five years, six years of like really bad economic times in America. It led to America being embarrassed on the national stage. Um, and, and, and it really opened the door for, um, well, it, it, for America to have a tough decade, a tough, the 70s were tough times in America. The beginning of the 80s were bad economic times. Um, you know, that's why in part Reagan came in and he said, we need, to, we need to start over at morning in America. Let's have a fresh start because things aren't great right now. Big cities were poverty look really bad. America, was America losing the Cold War? <laughs> right? This is the thing, 1975, because of Vietnam. Um, we're going to find out that um, the Soviet Union has its own, its own Vietnam and Afghanistan in the 80s, and that does, in part, bring the end of the Cold War. But this was the lowest point that America hits during the Cold War. 